Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Anne, you're in Scent Solutions. All we do here is talk about perfumes. So if you're new and just joining us, thank you for joining. I really appreciate you. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always watching, supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So without further ado, we're talking Teriak by Latafa. I'm sure you've really all watched reviews. I've seen so many reviews of it as well. But I decided to give it a try, wait for some time, see how I feel about it in depth before coming to talk about it. So today we'll be looking at it. I will also be looking at it alongside La Belle by Jean-Paul Gaultier just to see if, you know, if they compare. So let's start with a little bit of background. This is in collaboration with Quentin Bish. Quentin Bish is the nose behind a lot of beautiful mainstream perfumes. So he's done the Delina series by Perfumes de Mali. He's done La Belle, Le Bu by Jean-Paul Gaultier. He's done Pure Excess. So he's done, you know, a lot of good work in perfumery and he's very well respected. And I see this as you know, a milestone, a very critical milestone when it comes to Middle Eastern perfumery. That's just working with the mainstream perfumers, you know, trying to infuse elements of both worlds. That is mainstream Western perfumes with, you know, the Middle Eastern intensity and the traditional Middle Eastern flavor. I feel like it's going to be a very exciting time in the world of perfumes it's also going to impact pricing, obviously, <laughs> in my opinion, as we can see from this. I think the pricing of this range is somewhere between $40 to $50. So you can see that it's already taking a toll on, on the prices, especially when it comes to the lower end Middle Eastern fragrance market. I'm not talking about the Amouages of this world. No, I'm talking about the Latafas, the fragrance world, you know, those more affordable perfumes. Anyways, that being said, let's talk Teriac. So the packaging is Latafa standard, very beautiful, very high quality. I wasn't disappointed. The bottle is also very beautiful, but I did not like the snake on top. <laughs> I just don't like that whole imagery. But if you're into this kind of imagery, you obviously like this one. So yeah, I did like the color. I found it to be really pretty and feminine and just very, very beautiful. I, I, I think they put a lot of work into making this look pretty and I respect that. Now let's talk scents. When you first spray this, you're going to get a lot of sweetness in the opening. This is a very sweet, indulgent, intense perfume. So the opening smells to me like an apricot rhubarb tart, just freshly baked, freshly brought out of the oven. That's what the opening smells like, but it doesn't stop there. It's like the rhubarb apricot tart is drizzled with caramel and honey. That is the opening of this perfume. There's a tartness, a little tartness, almost sourness that comes from that rhubarb. So if you're somebody who did not like, for instance, the tartness in Delina or Delina exclusive, I don't know which one had the rhubarb, but if you didn't like that type of tartness, you're not going to like the opening here because that sour note stays in the background and is quite prominent in the first, let me say 15, 20, 30 minutes of this perfume. But you're going to get that, like I said, with that warm, indulgent, very decadent caramel, you know, with the fruitiness. You're going to get all of that in the opening. However, it doesn't stay only in the foodie territory. So there is a backdrop of suede in this perfume. It's listed as leather, but to me, it comes across you know, less assertive than leather. It comes across as suede. It's just plush. It adds richness and a little bit more sophistication to this perfume, as opposed to if they had left it at just the gourmand components. 
So that backdrop of suede gives it very a very lush, you know, feel. Makes it a very interesting and complex gourmand. So after the first 30 minutes, when you smell all that I just described, you're going, in fact, from like 15, 20 minutes, actually, the vanilla actually makes an appearance. So you get that vanilla. It's very creamy and really beautiful and sweet and warm and cozy. So that vanilla is coming through and it's going to smell as though on the rhubarb apricot tart, almost like you put a scoop of vanilla ice cream on it. Of course, with all that caramel and honey. So that's what you're going to get in the mid. The tartness starts to go down as you transition to the middle of this perfume. In fact, it totally disappears in the mid. And that vanilla richness really takes over. All the while through the duration, the backdrop of suede is there. So it never goes away. Just lends this a lot of complexity, in my opinion. So you get that rich vanilla and then it comes through with a little bit of earthiness from the vetiver. There's also labdanum in here. While I don't necessarily get it in full force, it lends a little bit of that aromatic flavor to this one. A little, just very little bit. So vanilla comes through. You're getting all of that and then this goes and stays that way into the final dry down as we like to call it in Fracom. <laughs> so in the final dry down, all the intensity sort of tapers down and what you then get is a very simple structured fruity floral, okay? So you're going to get Still hints, you know, that vanilla, you're getting hints of that sweetness, and then you'll get a white floral. The white floral actually shines through more in the dry down. It comes across as a, a watery white floral, as opposed to the likes of tuberous that are more intense and heady. So this is not a heady white floral. It's a bit more of if white floral on the watery side it doesn't smell like tuberose or jasmine to me it sort of leans in the direction of maybe something like a magnolia or gardenia something of the sort i don't know the specific one is a very simple easy white floral on vanilla perfume so your vetiver your labdanum that leather they're all going to play a part in just giving this depth and holding together the other sweeter notes. So that is what Teriac really does in terms of how it transitions. Starts with the rich intensity of, you know, the fruits and the caramel and honey. Goes into the creamy, warm, enveloping vanilla supported all by vertiver and you know the swedish notes and then transitions into a very plain easygoing simple white floral vanilla that is teriyak performance wise very intense you know what i've described is a really intense perfume but i think it lasts longer on my clothes than on my skin so on my skin this will give me about three hours by the fourth hour, it honestly has become a skin scent, but it projects quite well in the sense that it will give you slightly above arm's length projections. I think that's okay. So if you walk into the room, those around you will smell you definitely. Uh, this is not one that you overspray. No, you have to be measured when you're spraying this. So for me, because I wanted it to really project, I did like somewhere between six to, to eight sprays, right? And that's what gave me this performance I'm describing. Now, in terms of um, on clothes, this will last me about somewhere between seven to nine hours on my clothes. Again, I'm talking somewhere between six to eight sprays. I think I did respray at about the fourth hour mark. I did like three, four more sprays at the fourth hour mark. So 
just putting that in context. But I think generally it's a very heavy, intense perfume. It's not one that you want to overspray if you don't have the intention to take over the room. Towards the end, though, it becomes a skin scent. So maybe towards the end, everything goes down. But for the first three, four hours, you're going to really be, you know, taking over the room, so to speak. So that's it in terms of how this scent progresses. It's definitely more feminine than masculine, in my opinion. It's a gourmand lover's heaven. But you have to take note of those that sourness of the rhubarb, a slight almalic touch that will come from the suede, the slight earthiness that will come from the vetiver. You know, those are slight nuances that you need to be aware of. It's really, really heavy on the caramel sweetness. Now, when you compare this to La Belle by Paul Gaultier, when you compare it to this one, I would just say that there's some slight distinctions. So La Belle, for instance, to me is lighter, it's less imposing, it's not as thick and rich as Teriyak, doesn't have that rhubarb, doesn't have that caramel facet, right? What they share really is the vanilla and the vetiver. However, I would say that somewhere as the scent transitions, there are similarities. So I wouldn't say that, you know, for instance, Teriyak is a dupe. No way. It's not a dupe. It's a totally different perfume. You can totally have both of them in your collection. But there's somewhere in the evolution of Teriyak where it takes on a label-like quality. And I think maybe that's when the vanilla and the vetiver come into play. That's what I think. But they could be classed as perfumes in the same scent family, but they're definitely not dupes. Think of Teriyak as a more amplified label, <laughs> if, that's, if that helps. But at least label will give you a starting point as to what Teriyak may smell like. So that is it for this perfume. If you have it, please let me know in the comments. Talk to me about it. What's your experience? Is it something that you think you'll buy based on what I have described? I think it's really rich and indulgent. I will give it an 8.5 over 10 very easily because everything was well taken care of in this perfume. The packaging, the scent, the complexity. This is definitely not a linear scent. It gives you so many face it. So you're going to get something at different stages of this perfume. It's really intriguing and exciting to me. So for me, I'll give it an 8.5 over 10. It will not be everyone's cup of tea, which is why I would probably say maybe test if you have the opportunity to before you buy. But I think that this was done beautifully. And I think Quentin Bish did this one. He executed this perfectly. And I love it. And I can't wait to see what this becomes as it macerates. Because this is just after eh, barely three weeks or so of owning this. So thank you so much. That's my review. See you on another video. Enjoy yourselves. Bye.